Why are these guys protesting Palestine? Well, I suppose there's never a bad time to protest for, for more power to Palestinians. Are they pissed off that they're not getting the same attention as the Ukrainians? Maybe. Howdy folks and welcome. Welcome to the van. So today I want to do a, a video about Abramovich, Chelsea and Russian oligarch situation in general. I just want to do a nice simple video, uh, just try and better explain what's going on. Now, first of all, I want to say I really do feel for Chelsea fans. I, I do. I, I get it. Okay. In, in life, you know, everyone has their thing in life and football for a lot of people is massive in their life they work all week uh, to go to the football home and away and you know it's, it's so important to them and it is their life everyone has their thing in life whether it's golf or whether it's skydiving I don't know rock climbing or whatever everyone has their thing in life that they do and if it's taken away it's really 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 hard and for me it's like it's live music you know if, if live music was under threat for me i couldn't go and see live music i'd be you know really really upset and we, we know that you know in the grand scheme of things when people are being bombed in ukraine you know it's not the be all and end all but it's, st it's still upsetting when it, when it happens but everyone has their thing in life like i say mine's live music if you're Boris Johnson, it's, uh, <laughs> it's taking private jets from uh, climate change meetings in Scotland to London to go and have dinner with your mates, or burning 50 pound notes in front of uh, in front of homeless people. If you're Boris Johnson, but everyone has their thing in life, and uh, it's never good when it's taken away. But this is the thing: Chelsea fans understand the score. They know in the big scheme of things that uh, you know football is not important, but it still doesn't stop it hurting does it when you when your club that you love that you absolutely love is under threat of existing it's it's, it's still gonna hurt but yeah i just wanted to do this video to maybe just better understand why this is happening and and what's going on and you know in my basic knowledge i'll try and make it as simple as possible i'm gonna let this uh, taxi out but feel free in the comment section if, if you want to add anything if i've messed anything up or if you if you want to add but really really basic just the pure understanding of russian oligarchs and what they're about so fall of the soviet union in the early 1990s yeltsin had to hand over all industry that was government owned to private enterprises to start a, uh, um, a free market economy in Russia. And he didn't really do the best job of it. He, he had this voucher system where basically every single citizen of the country got a voucher to have shares in a company, which sounds like a good idea, but people didn't really know what was going on. And a lot of people actually sold these vouchers to people like the, the oligarchs, the, the the ones that exploited the situation and they bought up everyone else's vouchers. But anyway, that's what formed the first phase of Russian oligarchs. So there was a handful of people that owned, that were very, very rich and owned all of the industries, gas, electric, financial, and everything, uh, and all the industries in, uh, in Russia. And then Putin came along and he wasn't happy with these oligarchs because they weren't loyal to him. Uh, so he went on a full frontal assault to only put people that were loyal to him in charge of industries to the point of even um, putting people in prison that would not release their hold on whatever industry they had. You know, you stitch people up, you freeze their assets, you put them in prison on trumped up charges in order to put in place people that were loyal to him. Most famously, the big gas owner is uh, his, his childhood friend. So every single oligarch now in place is loyal to Putin. And this is why it's so important for us to put massive sanctions on every single one of those Russian oligarchs. Because a number of reasons. First, money. We, we don't know what deals Roman Abramovich has with, with Putin you would think he's funneling money back to Putin, of course. So there's the financial thing. We don't want any money going back to Russia from all of these oligarchs. But for me, most importantly, what I think the most important reason is, let's let this guy out. Go on, mate. Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off he pop. There we go. Um, the most important thing for me is that we need to make these Russian oligarchs' life as uncomfortable 
as possible because they have power, these guys, and Putin is only one man. He's only one man. And if enough of these oligarchs rally around, get the troops rallied to put a sword to this Putin regime, the better. And the way you do that is by making their life insanely uncomfortable. So, Mr. Abramovich, <laughs> you know, you're not making any money out of the UK now. You've lost Chelsea Football Club. So what you need to do is rally round with your oligarch mates to make sure you can topple Putin. Because we can't fight him militarily. You know this, we can't fire at Russia. We can't use our military against Russia. It's too dangerous. You're sensible people, you know this. So we have to use every weapon available to us. And that's sanctions, and that's constantly getting the message out that this is not acceptable. Every single town and city and street will need to be protesting and waving their Ukrainian flags and doing everything possible. But one of the most powerful things is just hurting these oligarchs as much as possible, making their life an absolute misery so they can rise up and topple this, this Putin regime. Because that... that that's all Russia need. They can't lose face. So if they can take if they can take out Putin themselves and blame the whole thing on Putin, then they've got a scapegoat there, haven't they? And they've got a way out. Um, but yeah, give me your thoughts, guys. That's my basic understanding of what's what's going on with Abramovich. And like I said, I, feel, I do feel for Chelsea fans. I used to be one when I was a kid. I hate saying that because I'm one of those lame guys that switch football club allegiances when. <laughs> <laughs> later on in life uh, I grew up a Chelsea fan my uncle was a Chelsea fan he got me into football I was a Chelsea fan when uh, Chelsea was shit in the 90s <laughs> okay <laughs> and I saw the glory years of the early 2000s but I'm, I moved over to Brighton Brighton got a new stadium they eventually got into the Premier League and I'm, I'm sorry I'm one of those guys that, that switched allegiances because I, I just got to the point where okay I grew up watching Chelsea but I can never go and watch Chelsea because it's it's in London, it's too expensive, it's really difficult to get tickets. I'm going to see Brighton several times in a, in a season, so I'm thinking, who do I really support here? It's Brighton, but anyway, you didn't come for a, a lecture about my football allegiances. So I do have a soft spot for Chelsea, um, but what I don't have a soft spot is for um, Russian oligarchs. And, you know... It's hard as a Chelsea fan. It really is hard as a Chelsea fan to not take this to heart because, you know, Abramovich brought so much, so much to Chelsea. Not just the the, the cups that they won and everything, but the, the you know, the um, the youth team, the the, the the stadium, the facilities, everything. He's done so much for that club. So Chelsea fans are going to have so much love for him. But do you really know? what he's about I mean he would have had to be involved with some dodgy stuff to get to where he was like I said about those those vouchers that originally came out for to get to get shares in uh, in Russia in Russian industries you know some dodgy stuff had to go on there some real dodgy stuff but anyway I'm bambling and I'm, I'm at my destination but to be honest, I mean, I'd be looking to do the same thing for the Saudi Arabian owned Newcastle United for their war in Yemen. Uh, but I guess people don't care as much about brown people getting bombed than white people. The same reasons why public opinion in this country seems to be a lot more for Ukrainian refugees coming over here than uh, Afghanistan refugees. <laughs> <laughs> it's strange, isn't it? It's, it? it's strange. But, you know, I, I guess it's just human nature, isn't it? The closer to home it is. You know, when you've got a war in Europe, it feels far more closer to home. Well, it is basically home. Um, so people, you know, the, the wars in the Middle East, they still seem like a distant land away, don't they? A distant place. But anyway, that's that's me done. As always, guys, give me your thoughts. Is there anything that I missed? I just kind of do a very basic, you know, van man understanding of what's going on with Abramovich was what I was trying to achieve. What's this guy doing? The door open. Bloody hell. Until next time, guys. Take care.